Hydraulic pressure. Check. Flaps. <coughs> Check. Rudder. Check. Name change. Name change? We never did that on Virgin. Company policy. Sort of do with passenger expectations. They like to think that pilots are all urban, sophisticated men who look like Piers Brosnan in ray bands. And your name doesn't fit the image, does it? A dinny Harbottle. It was good enough for me father. Precisely. All right then. So who am I? Uh, oh, Nigel Summersby. Oh, get stuffed. I'm not being called Nigel. I wouldn't be named Nigel. Why can't I be Nick Watkins? Because I want to be Nick Watkins and I'm the captain, right? So? So, I'm the boss. So, you do what I tell you, right? Or I'll bloody well chin you, right? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain, Nick Watkins, and co-pilot, Nigel Summersby, welcoming you aboard the Class Air flight from Florida to London Heathrow. French-Canadian air traffic control have at last extracted their digit, so we're left clear for takeoff. What's he like then, this new co-pilot? He's married, Trevor. He's from Gateshead. Well, I used to do long hauls with the fellow once in Gateshead. He was like Duran Duran, all rolled into one. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I asked for a first class ticket. Now they have put me way back there. In middle class or working? Was that like ambassador or executive or connoisseur class? No, no, madam, that's so passe. On class air, see, where you sit depends on what class you are. You've got your working class, your middle class, and your upper class, see? What kind of system is that? Oh, well, it's how the Brits like it, you know. They like to know who's who, otherwise they're getting a tiz. So say you're prime minister, he would sit in upper class, right? Ooh, no. He used to be working class, and now he's middle class. Oh, right. But say you're Jeeves and Wooster types, now they would be upper class, right? Right. Right. And the guy who cleans the streets, now he would sit in working class, right? Right. And back home, now my husband's an accountant. That makes me middle class, right? Oh, no. You're an American. Excuse me, Trevor. I've just found this gentleman. He took up residence in one of the lavatories during takeoff, and apparently he doesn't know where to sit because he's lost his boarding pass. Speak. Well, I know I had it when I come through the gate. Back of the bus, dear. <laughs> A playground in London, and being a playground, it contains a group of children who are playing together. But look closer, something is special about them. They are from very different backgrounds. Kelly, Timothy and Peter. These young children are the teachers, the executives, the bus drivers and the prisoners on remand of the future. This program follows their lives. Give me a child until he is seven, and I will show you a seven-year-old child. <coughs> Kelly goes to a primary school in the east of London. Here she is on her working-class way to school. Her classmates are happily amusing themselves. Oh! Here comes the teacher. Um, I think I'd, I'd like to get married, but I don't want to marry a boy because they're too rough. Yeah, that's it by your hair. Yeah. And I don't want to have any children because my mum had five girls and it made her very tired and she told my dad to stop it, so he left. These boys. 
boys at an exclusive prep school in Kensington are reciting the good ship Venus in Latin. Well, I'm down for a Charterhouse or Marlborough. I'm down for Charterhouse. So am I. Then I'm down for Trinity College, Cambridge. I'm going to a different college, Cambridge. So am I. Then I'm down for becoming a barrister. So am I. Shut up, Cosworth. You shut up. When I'm 27, I shall marry someone who reminds me of Nanny. Then I'm going to be Conservative MP for... for... De Morgan, and I'm going to have to resign from the cabinet because of a sex scandal. Yes, so will I. But my wife will stand by me. Mummy's not sure if I'll have a sex scandal, but I might. After that, my drink problem will get worse and I'm down for divorce. Then I'm down for dying of cirrhosis of something. Um, and I'm going to leave everything to my children so they can follow in my footsteps and enjoy the privileges it is that I, that I had. I might go to Oxford instead. Peter attends a local grammar school because he's only middle class. I want to be a gynaecologist. Why do you want to do that? Because I like to travel and dig up all sorts of old fossils and things. I want a nice house with a garden, all nice and cosy and quiet. With a garden? I said that. All peaceful and quiet. And um, I want a little baby, a little fat little baby. Oh, sweet, yeah. At 21, Kelly was married with a baby and living on a canal boat. Will you shut that down? For God's sake, you're driving me mad! And you won't put a baby up! You inconsiderate dick! Listen to this. Johnny, be good. Oh, I can't play that bit. Chuck Berry can play it, but Steve can't because he's crap. She doesn't know what's crap and what isn't. I do, actually. I'm married to it. Yeah, we, we argue sometimes, like any other couple. And sometimes it gets sort of quite sort of heated, like the time you run over me with your bike. Yeah, I ran over. Drove straight over me. Well, you did ask for it. Yeah, I did ask for it. I was late with his dinner. Yeah, I've come home. Nothing in the oven. No roast chicken, nothing. Oh, I mean, I didn't have any choice, really. Could have been worse. He could have drowned me like he tried to do before. So, are you happy with your life? Yeah, I think so. I've got husband and baby and a lot of tattoos. At least I'm not on the shelf. <laughs> and the rows and the lies and the deceit and the physical and mental abuse mean well. It's all part of married life, isn't it, really? Well, you are no, that, that's, that's my word. Tim is in his final year at Trinity College, Cambridge, studying maths and field sports. 
So the angle of the 12 ball times the coefficient of the distance and velocity of the shot is equal to the height of the pheasant minus pi divided by the speed at which it's flying squared. And uh, what is the Mountbatten theorem of shooting? Uh, always wear the bottom button of the waistcoat under. Excellent. Well, of course, one is conscious of belonging to an elite, but one is not ashamed of that. Indeed, why should one be? I mean, we are the cream. I mean, here at Cambridge, we are the bit above the cream. We are the little bit of air between the cream and the bottle top. Meanwhile, Peter is in his second year at North London Polytechnic. Yes, I suppose I do go out with lots of chicks. Most of the relationships are quite physical. I'm a bit too young to make a commitment for more than a couple of days. But hey, last for living, man. By 28, Kelly has had two more children, divorced Steve, married David, and had two more children. Well, David's a lot different from Steve in many ways. Um, for a start, he's left-handed. And um, he didn't like the tattoos, so I had to have him change from this is Steve's bitch to this is David's bitch. But I don't mind because uh, David's a classier name anyway. When did you first realise that your marriage with Steve was in trouble? I think when I found him in bed with the all girl band and he said he was rehearsing, but you know, I sensed then that something wasn't right. <laughs> I mean, it's my fault really because I missed the bus and I was late home and he didn't really have any choice. <laughs> so, what finally made you get out of the relationship? Um, when the other girls moved in and I had to sleep in a tent on the towpath with the kids. And, uh, I mean, I know some people have think I was being unreasonable, right, but I really think it was out of order. And what did you say to Steve? Well, I told him straight, you know, I said, um, I can't stand this anymore, three more years and that's it. And then one day, he was rehearsing Johnny B. Good and the guitar short-circuited blew him straight through the upper deck and uh, his last words were I've nearly got it but he hadn't he's nowhere near Tim became a barrister and at 28 is conservative candidate for Tunbridge Wells he married Virginia no, no I wouldn't say I was privileged you've worked damn hard Yes, yes, I suppose I have. You have, Tim. Damned hard. Tell them. Damned hard. Stand up straight. And now you have a family. Yes, yes, we have a, a, a lovely child. Two. A two, two. A two lovely children. One's... Uh, eight. Eight, sorry, eight lovely children. Eight years old. Wake up, Timmy. Yes, of course. Um, and they're very, very much uh, a part of our lives. When we see them, which... Uh, we don't much, except on holidays. We've done the children bit. It's Timmy's career that's the most important thing now. In the cabinet by Christmas, eh, Timmy? Well, yes. <laughs> you better had be. <laughs> At 28, Peter was doing a PhD in applied physics and cryptozoology. He was married to Denise, a social worker. Yes, we do want children, but not quite yet. We're enjoying our freedom too much at the moment. That's right. Another year or two and Denise will have a coral taken out. Then boom! <laughs> I'd, I'd like a girl. She'd like a girl. I don't mind what it is as long as it's got a career. Yes, that's important. It's smart. It's, it's, uh, it's very important. At 35, Peter was a teacher. Well, Little Red Riding Hood is an early example of what Hollywood calls the woman in jeopardy story. Silly woman, Kathleen Turner, chased by evil wolf, rescued by big strong woodchopper, Michael Douglas. I didn't plan to be a teacher, 
But I find it very rewarding. I seem to have a real affinity with the kids. At 35, Tim was well and truly cracking up. He's not coming out. Go away, you bastards. Stop persecuting me. Get out of here this minute, Timmy. Shut up. Leave me alone. Go away. I'm warning you, Timmy. There'll be no supper, early bed, and you're gated for a week. I don't care. Bugger off. Come back when he's 42. I'll have him sorted out by then. Will you come out? You made me look a complete idiot. The camera crew were there and everything. Mummy, why is Daddy still in the bathroom? At 35, Kelly has divorced David. Well, I was watching telly and I saw this program about this woman who got married at 21 to this bastard. And then she married a complete Wally, and she was, like, miserable all the time. And I thought, that's my life. And it was. It was this programme. Yeah, it was this programme. It made me realise my life for what it was. Disaster. What do you think of your life, Peter? Well, it was going very well until we had the twins, Jason and Jasona. What happened? They started beating me up and made my life a misery. Should have sent them to boarding school, old boy. Get shot of them quick. What about you, Tim? Do you see yourself as a success? Yes, in a way I do. After all, I did go to uh, Charthouse. Or was it Marlborough? Anyway, I, uh, I achieved what I set out to do, which was to, uh, to, uh, to, to go to Marlborough. Um, and I've now got the rest of my life ahead of me to do, to, to do, to do, um... Oh, of course, I've got the sex scandal to look forward to. And then I could go to Charterhouse. No, I've done that. I think it is frightfully, f frightfully of the essence that one does what one, one, one can with one's, uh, with one's, um with one's things, in that way. And do you, Kelly, still think that your life is a disaster? Oh, of course not. Not since we got together. Well, I'd always fancied you, since you were seven. Yeah, I know that now. And like when we did 28 Up, I mean, the electricity between us was like electric, wasn't it? I mean, you did feel that way too, didn't you? Oh, yes, certainly, my. My voice was trembling and everything. It took us another seven years to get off of each other, didn't it? I know. I, I was too mixed up in that whole TV thing, sleeping with the PA, all the usual media stuff. Still, we did it in the end. And I'm happy. Are you happy? Absolutely. Can we turn the camera off now? OK. That's a wrap, everyone. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Mingo! Mingo! Thank you so much. Now we shall go to the pit floor, where I shall have my hair appointment. I have my hair washed once every three months, whether it needs it or not. And then that charming man in the food hall will skin and fill it to live and soul for my passion, Delilah. Pretty bingo. Oh, my goodness, it's hot in here. But then I suppose you people like that, don't you? Oh, 50 pence for the telephone. Thank you so much. And then perhaps a little shoplifting in Haberdashery. Eh? So what did you say to madame? Well, I said, you've not been following your three-point regime, have you? It's pointless using your bonjour matin until you've sloughed. Can you remember the size of my pores before I started exfoliating? Oh, I couldn't do my makeup properly this morning. They cut off the electricity in my bed seat. Do you know, a customer this morning asked me if I was from Iran. No. I mean, I don't look Iranian. Do a push, but they're your colouring. Do you want to use tomorrow's fragrance today? Oh. I said that yesterday. Oh, look at my expression folds. Oh, I don't know everything's so expensive. Would you mind if I use the perfume? No, no, thank you very much. I'm down here to see my daughter. But, oh, my God, everything's so expensive. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, 
I don't have to pay you, do I? You don't have to, madam. No, because I didn't use the, um... Can you double out and get a cup of tea for under five pounds? Not in this shop, madam. Oh, no, it's so expensive. So expensive. You listen to me out here, are you? I've got them signed the back of a fiver for that kiddie's charity, you know. I'll tell you something, he's only five foot two in real life. Hold on, I'll have a couple of them soaps to me mum. Likes a nice bit of soap, me mum does. I'll tell you something, this is the best cars here in London. And I should know, because I use them all. I've got to go, I've got the cab double park. There you go, girl. Cheer up, might never happen. It really is. Simply, Mrs. Birdsall, we, uh... We, uh, we want the very best for Janine. The very best. Uh, I never had the advantages, you see, and, uh, Well, neither of us did. Uh, we saw you at school on the television. And there's the uh, documentary on Channel 4. <laughs> Painted us in rather a rosy light, I think. Yes, and, and Frank turned to me and he said, uh, well, he said, I don't see why our Janine shouldn't go to a school like that. She's she... got brains. <laughs> Dame Eleanor was considered a progressive in her day, and not only for her views on animal rights. She believed passionately that heathers have an important role to play in society. Sadly, with rising costs, that privilege is somewhat expensive. Oh, uh, we're well aware that sacrifices will have to be made. We've done the sums. <laughs> Holidays will be a thing of the past. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we almost think you're better off without a car nowadays. <laughs> what exactly is your line of business, Mr Pillsworth? He's with Needlers. Uh, the biscuit people? Oh, I think we sell your custard creams in our tuck shop. Oh. <laughs> well, well, if you ever have a, a packet that's all... Uh, Broken up, send it back to me. That's what I do. You mend them? No, it, he's with quality control. It's a very responsible job. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the money's not our main concern. What we're wondering is, will Janine fit in? Yes, uh, will she fit in, quite frankly? Our founder believed that pupils should be drawn from the widest possible spectrum. I have pursued this policy rigorously. Last year, we admitted a girl from Wolverhampton. And the fifth form have a girl, I believe, who is the love child of a member of status quo. She'll listen to you. Now, don't cry. You'll set your mother off. You won't forget to feed Treacle, will you? Of course we won't. By the time you come home for Christmas, it'll be the fattest hamster in Broxbourne. Aha! The pills works. And uh, this must be Janine. I hope that's not a tear. Heathers, don't cry. There's always a period of adjustment. We find that the first two years are the worst. <laughs> See? It's official. Karen with us and Rexic. How did she catch it? You don't catch it, Suki. You sort of develop it to get back at your parents. Well, what will happen to her? Well, I suppose she'll go into a clinic and then become a model like her sister. This aardvark. Says so, doesn't it? Who are you? Janine Piltworth. Oh, God, they haven't put you in here, have they? I don't want to be here. 
I didn't want to come to this, not your school. I'd rather be home in my own bed. These are my CDs, and if anyone blacks my biscuits, they're history. God, she doesn't even speak English. <sighs> He's not his old self, Treacle. Are you, son? She doesn't sound quite so miserable in this letter, Frank. And there's a note from the matron. They've stopped force-feeding her. Oh, well, that's a step in the right direction. Oh, she's going to be needing guns, apparently. Guns? For the clay pigeon shooting. They recommend somewhere called Purdy's. Well, that'll mean tightening the belt a bit more. No, don't even think of it, Jackie. We just won't eat much. Weekends, obviously. You've been on dirty jobs ever since you've got here, haven't you? Victimisation, innit? Heathers don't bleat. Do you know who I am? Everybody does. You're the Honourable Camilla Frencham. Your dad's, uh... Duke of King's Cross or something like that. The title's a drag, but it does give one a sort of edge around here. Do you know what slushing is? I think so. It's when younger girls get all moony over older girls. Yes, but if I made you my slush, it would make your life a lot easier. You do it between prep and dozies when everyone's around. You bring me a prezi, an orange or one of those ghastly chocolate biscuits you seem to have an endless supply of. You say, I slush you, and I say, I slush you back. What would I have to do? Oh, just a few faves. Toast the odd bun, that kind of thing. We knew you'd be bushed, so we made your bed and sorted out your bears. Hope they're in the right order. Thanks. Appreciate it. Is she as cool as she looks? Does she wear eyeliner? Is her brother going for half term? Does she have a boyfriend? Heathers don't blab. She's not coming, Frank. Not coming? She's going to stay with a friend in Perthshire. But it's Christmas. Well, she couldn't very well go skiing in Broxbourne, could she? Skiing? Yes. That's what she wants for her present. The skis, the suit, the thermal underwear, the moon boots. Let her room. I could put an ad in the poly. Yeah, I could probably sell a kidney. And it's not too late to cancel the turkey. Nice to have something Christmas Day, though, isn't it? Help us. We're looking for Janine Pillsworth. Janie Pillsworth? Captain of school? Oh, I expect that'll be the one, yes. Prefix pair well in the senior common room. She can't still be common. OK, next. Hazel Rhoda is out of control. She's been yobbing with the townies and selling acid tabs to the lower school. Gated indefinitely, obviously. Yeah. No treats, no privs, and I think we should shave her head, yeah? Yeah. 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 OK, last but groan, groan, not least, Parents' Day. Oh. 
Suggestions, please. Thoughts on paper in my buzz box by prep. Any idea who's giving out the prizes? But it looks as if we might end up with Geoffrey Archer. Oh, but he's such a noy. I know, he's an utter pleb. No. No. I've been pushing hard for Emma Thompson, but I think she's going to be in LA with Ken. And we've got a few more irons in the fire, but I'm afraid none of them is called Jeremy. We wish. Who <laughs> you are. Who on earth is that? I think they're probably here about the caretaking job. Tea bell, Lucy. Back in 20. We don't mean to trouble you. We just wanted a word with Janine Pillsworth. It's me. My name is Janie. doing here? Well, we haven't seen you for the last five years. Yes, yeah, so we couldn't come to Parents' Day because we haven't got anything to wear. You couldn't come anyway. I don't have any parents. You don't? I told them you died years ago. A ski lift broke in Aspen. Oh, is that why you never wrote or brought friends home? Mother, please. How could I possibly bring friends home to that horrid house in Wormsley Road with its pebble dash and its silly little hedge? and that ludicrous artificial log fire in the living room, as you so pretentiously describe it, and the settee with its hand-crocheted armrests, and your collection of money box cottages, and the glass paperweights that snow when you turn them upside down. I mean, really. We've sold the horrid little house. We now live in a horrid caravan. Well, there you are, then. I spend my holes in the homes of friends, beautiful homes with croquet lawns and orchards, and inside there's the smell of wood smoke and fresh cut flowers and there's labradors on the hearth and deer on the walls in the winter i'm in swiss chalets in the summer tuscan villas mellowed with age and surrounded by cypress trees what are your plans after you leave school i shall do the season of course after that courtesy of my friend cordelia's father i shall be doing cordon bleu in paris and for my year out either his boat or his chateau near limoges oh, that's very generous of him I don't think we've got a stretch to that. I am sleeping with him, Father. Oh, oh, I see. Well, uh, yeah. So we shan't be seeing much of you in Broxbourne, then. Can't you get it into your heads? You'll never see me. Unless by some grotesque quirk of fate we should happen to pass each other on some distant street, which I doubt, since I can't possibly picture you on the Avenue Foch. But if it should happen, Please, and this is the last thing I shall ever ask of you, please give not the slightest flicker of recognition or the remotest hint that I might be from the same gene pool. She despises us, Frank. Oh, obviously. And everything we stand for. Treated us with contempt. Loathing contempt. It's everything we ever dreamed of. Vicky, because I heard you had a sweet too. Thanks very much. Oh. They'll surely land on this. I'll have a go eventually, haven't I? If you foul up, it could have fatal consequences for the safety of this aircraft. I can handle it. All right, then. Go on. But watch your diphthongs, right? Otherwise, I'm cutting you off. This is your co-pilot, Nigel Summersby. Sorry about the bumpy ride, it's just a little bit of turbulence. As soon as we reach our cruising altitude of 36,000 feet, we shall be serving lunch. Working class passengers will be having sausage and beans, followed by treacle pudding with custard. 
The middle class will be having chicken tikka salad with virtually fat-free mayonnaise, followed by strawberry fromage fray. While the upper class will be having sausage and beans, followed by treacle pudding with custard. Those dulcet tones. What now? I'm reading. Can we open these now, Mummy? Not till Christmas. Can I go to the loo? I told you to go before we got on the plane. Can we go and see the pilot? Tamsin, why would the pilot want to see the two nastiest children in Britain? Because other children did. Cause, Hugo. It's not cause, it's because. Cause is a lettuce or one of the grubbier Greek islands. It's very, very important. If you carry on talking like that, you'll end up chewing bubblegum, wearing trainers and living somewhere like Macclesfield. If you want to shop at Argos and have a house that smells of vinegar, it's cause. And if you want shiny shoes and riding lessons, it's because. So it's your choice, darlings. What do you think, Tamsin? Cause or because? Because. Hugo? Because. Thank you. Trevor, this trouble in middle class. They'll be the death of me, those middle classes. For Christ's sake, where do I sit? Not now, dear. Do we have a problem, Anne? This is a photograph of our house in Henley-on-Thames. And in the summer, we take a cottage near Southwold. My husband's with the Nat West, and he's treasurer of the local rugby football club. So? Well, you've put us in upper lower middle. We think at the very least we should be in middle upper middle. What does your wife do? Trick question. Oh. She doesn't do anything, except the occasional fundraiser for UNICEF. Does she have a sacred drinking problem and drive a Volvo? Yes, of course I do. I think they've got a case. Bump them, Cherry. Bump. Yes! Isn't that Lord Belchester in working class? Yes. Oh, Trevor. Have we ever had a knob in the earth before? I'm going to think very carefully before I answer that one. Love, found yourself a pew. Yeah, now this is great. I feel like I really belong here, you know? It's brilliant, isn't it? I love it to death back here. Really? Now, I would have thought that you were a middle-class guy. Me? Oh, no. Middle class? Just because I'm senior transatlantic cabin steward, brackets, grade three, close brackets, doesn't mean to say I'm middle class. Well, what are you then? Me? I'm not anything class, love. You see, I am what I am. I am my own special creation. So come take a look. Give me the hook or the ovation. Drop. Some think it's noise. I think it's pretty. And so what? If I love it, rather run this spangle. Why not try to see things from a different angle? Your life is a sham till you can. Just to go with them. Needs no excuses. I deal my own deck. Sometimes the ace, sometimes the juice. There's one life, and there's no return and no deposit. One life, so it's time to open up your closet.
We hope you've enjoyed a class act. This Saturday, Clive James is back on ABC, bigger and better than ever, with a weekly look at global events and some of the funniest moments from the world of television entertainment. Don't miss the new series of Saturday Night Clive with guest Tom Hanks, Saturday at 10 o'clock. Stay with us now for ABC News and Late Line.